Good morning. Yes, I have a lightsaber. I am awesome because I have a lightsaber. The reason I have a lightsaber is because the kids ministry begged me. They asked me, they pleaded with me. Dan, can you please put this on your devotional this morning? Because we have our kids XP this weekend, which means we are asking our kids to invite their non-Christian friends to be able to come to church to be able to have fun, to be able to invite their friends so that they can come to know Jesus. So this is that weekend. And so if you've got friends or family member, please do that. And they gave me a lightsaber, which is all I asked for. So please give me a lightsaber because that makes me cool. So I got my Star Wars, you know, this is my Hispanic shirt that I got from family members. So just so you know, and then this thing changes all these colors. Oh yeah, one of the coolest ones ever. So just so you know. This is, we're having fun with this, uh, so just let people know about that, and now I'm going to put it down. So kids ministry, Nicole specifically, you're welcome. All right, so that's done. Hey guys, hope you're having a great, you know, uh, morning, you know, on this day, and uh, um, excited that we're continuing, you know, as we're following in God's word, and as I mentioned to you, what's happening this weekend, you know, just another opportunity that God gives us to reach the world for him one person at a time, which is the vision that he has for all churches, uh, including ours, uh, up. So uh, just excited to be here. Uh, yes, Ruthie, I uh, love to watch a grown man play with toys. Well, there you go. You know, um, I'm just excited that you called me a grown man, I guess, more than anything else. All right, so with that being said, we are in 1 Samuel. Uh, we started a new book yesterday, and so we're excited to be able to jump into this. 1 Samuel, you know, chapter uh, 1, we're just beginning this, and we're the last half of it. Just to give you a background, again, we know, you know, that, uh, you know, um, Hannah has been praying to God for a child, uh, and uh, Eli, who serves in the temple, has uh, uh, thought she was drunk. She wasn't, uh, and just uh, blessed her, and she walked away encouraged. And Hannah's prayer was, God, if you give me a child, specifically a son, I will give this child back to you. And uh, just reminded us as parents and grandparents, you know, that these are not our kids, even if they live in our house, that we're supposed to give them over to the Lord. And our job is to raise them. Some people ask, what's the purpose of parenting? And something that really stood out to me a number of years ago, it wasn't too long ago, where um, um, what, I think it's called the Sacred Parenting by Gary Thomas, you know, where he emphasizes the goal of parenting is to take dependent kids, dependent kids, and the American answer is, and make them become independent as they continue to grow up and responsible adults. That's not what the purpose of parenting is. The purpose of parenting is to take dependent kids, kids who are dependent upon their parents, and help them to learn how to be dependent on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of parenting. It's not to raise independent kids. It's actually to raise kids who become dependent on Jesus. And uh, that's something I'm praying for. We kind of lost that opportunity now with Josiah. I think he's doing well, but you know, something I always going to kind of like, man, did we do good enough? And I got two more. So you could be praying for my kids if you don't have kids, but with your kids, you know, those are some things that God is entrusted to us for. So with that in mind, with what Hannah has been praying, here's what happened, you know, to Hannah's prayer. Verse 19, the entire family got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. They returned, then they returned home to Ramah. When Elkanah slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her plea, and in due time she gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, for she asked, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Now, the Lord remembered, let me first start with Elkanah. Remember, one of the new things that I never you know, realized or learned before is Elkanah is actually, as a husband, he actually is from the tribe of Levi. So he is from the priestly tribe, uh, which um, God would actually have asked him and his lineage to be able to serve the Lord anyway. So this is almost a fulfillment of his destiny or the reason in which God was going to use him in the first place. Now, when it says the Lord remembered her, that, that word remembered is actually anthropom anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. It's a way of explaining God's actions in human terms. Because it's not like God forgot. You know, that's why I think, well, God remembered. Like, oh, like he actually forgot. And it's no, it just describes God's actions as, as the Bible is just trying to help us understand with that Hebrew word, you know, that he was fulfilling you know, was, was uh, following through. And so we use the word remember, you know, in that context. 
Now, the name Samuel uh, actually means name of God. That's what, it, that's what the name Samuel means, name of God. Uh, it also asked, that word asked, I asked of the Lord, in Hebrew actually sounds like the Hebrew word for Samuel. So there's kind of a play on words, you know, that's taking place, you know, as well. Uh, and, th- and then it says, you know, the next year, Elkanah and his family uh, went on their annual trip to offer a sacrifice to the Lord and to keep his vow. This is something, again, he did every single year. But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, wait until the boy is weaned, then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord permanently. Now, um, when that word weaned in, uh, in, in our culture might be, you know, when the child stops breastfeeding. But actually, in, in Hebrew culture, the child would have been two, three, maybe even four years of age would be that word for weaned. So kind of a, a growing up and a separation and probably knowing a mom's heart, he, she probably kept him as long as she could. Then I will take him up to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord permanently. Whatever you think is best, Elkanah agreed. Stay here for now. May the Lord help keep your promise. Help you keep your promise. So she stayed home and nursed the boy until he was weaned. Now it's interesting, you know, along those lines is that how many times do we promise the Lord in a situation of despair or a a situation of desire? A situation of despair or a situation of desire? See, a situation of despair is like, you know, if the world has fallen apart around me, God, if you'll get me out of this or you'll provide this to get me through this storm in life, then I will. And then we find many people, I know myself included at times, have just said, yeah, God, I, I will give my life. I will, you know, uh, focus on my family more with you at the center. I will spend more time in your word. But then many times when we get through that storm and God answers that prayer, how often do we forget how often do we go back to our routines? Uh, Hannah was going to be a faithful, a faithful person, you know, in the commitment that she made before the Lord and the prayer that she prayed, the prayer that she prayed, and how God fulfilled that prayer that she was going to keep her end of the promise. Now, I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine what this actually felt like for her to literally give over to the Lord. But that's what she promised, which shows, you know, her and her husband's commitment to God you know, regardless of the circumstances. It's just amazing to me. And so then it says this, when the child was weaned, uh, Hannah took him to the tabernacle uh, in Shiloh again. They brought along a three-year-old bull, you know, for the sacrifice, you know, or in other translations, three bulls, you know, for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Now, why would they sacrifice the bull? Uh, this is an opportunity. Again, sacrificial, you know, lamb, sacrificial animals would be help, would help cover the sins of the people of Israel. And so she's actually doing that on behalf of her son. Sir, do you remember me? You know, Hannah asked. I'm the very woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy, you know, um, and he granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshiped the Lord there. That's just amazing to me. You know, in this passage in chapter one, I think it's four times, maybe three or four times, they uh, just even in this passage, it's two or three, they, they worship the Lord. I mean, talk about the desire to worship God, to pray, to bring sacrifice and to sing, you know, to him. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's so characteristic of their family. And it's interesting, you know, that uh, in, in uh, our churches on our day, some people hesitate in worshiping God through song. And yet we're actually called and commanded to do so, to bring a sacrifice of praise actually to God. As much as we might bring a sacrifice of our time, our talents and our treasures, I think one of the things that I have forgotten to teach you is the importance of bringing a sacrifice of praise. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14, it says, for this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. What an opportunity, you know, for us to do that even on this day. And so I asked, as we go through this series, we're going through a series that begins tonight, you know, called Songs of Christmas, that we would also bring a sacrifice of praise. 
in whatever situation or circumstance. And as we pray to the Lord and as we make promises to the Lord, may we fulfill our end. God is a promise keeper. May we also be known as the same. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for how you lead, you guide, and direct our hearts. Guide and direct us now uh, with the things that we're praying for. And I just thank you for the opportunity that you're going to give us just to be able to proclaim who you are. And so, Father, may we praise you. May we bring a sacrifice. And Father, those times when you've gotten us through the storms and the promises that we have made, may we be promise keepers on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, have a great day. And again, don't forget, we got XP this weekend. It's going to be fun. Oh, that's the bad guy. It's going to be great. Uh, again, with, with uh, kids especially, uh, also with adults, it is always good. You know, I think I just cut off my shoulder. Uh, it is always good you know, to have some fun and to celebrate you know, in the midst of an opportunity. Again, what's the goal? It's, it's, you know, I, I've had people come in and be like, why are we doing this stuff? And it feels like it's not the right thing to do. And I'm like, anything that we can do to the Jews, we become a Jew in order to reach the Jews. You know, and in this case, you know, to the kids, we want to become like a kid in order to reach kids for Jesus Christ. Never sacrificing the message of Jesus, but always finding new methods to be able to help people hear, which ironically is what we're doing right now through something called an iPhone. So have a great day and uh, I will see you guys tonight in a, online, on site or on Sunday. We'll see you soon.